Okay, just touched down uh, from uh, CES 2023, just back into the studio. I'm just gonna get right into it. The best tech that I saw this year at the show and some of the best tech coming out uh, for the year, I thought for sure LG uh, did steal a show. They had many worlds first. The first being a 97 inch 4K completely wireless TV. So you could essentially have a TV mounted to something like a window, a wall completely flush with no cables running for it. So it kind of operates with this separate box which is called a zero connect box and it needs a direct line of sight to the TV, but it can be placed, I think anywhere up to a 30 feet away. So as long as it has that communication, obviously that has all the HDMI ports, that 4K support, all that. And that can obviously wirelessly transmit that image to the TV. So we're getting to that place where I guess cable management uh, will be a thing of the past and we can start having devices, TVs, massive ones, 97 inches just kind of mounted everywhere. So I think that was one of the coolest things that we saw. And the second item from LG that caught my eye, another world's first was the massive 45 inch curved 240 Hertz refresh rate gaming display. So under their LG Ultra Gear line, it was probably the best gaming monitor that I saw on the show. It's an OLED panel. So the colors were super bright. It was um, just kind of drop dead gorgeous. And some of the demos that I was playing, it felt nice and immersive. I'm a big F1 fan, so I see this perfect for a lot of people uh, playing racing or sim games. I know that uh, smaller monitors, preferably flat, are better for uh, your traditional FPS style game. But if you want a wow factor in your uh, desk setup and something obviously a bit different, having that OLED panel just puts it uh, you know one step above. So that's actually coming to my studio. I'm I'm super pumped to check that out uh, when I'd rock some F1 on it. And I think it would make uh, the greatest showcase for a gaming monitor. It just looks so, so good. So wait for that to uh, come into the studio. And the third thing that LG dropped is of course their brand new LG Gram. And there's actually a couple bunch of options. My favorite one was their new Slimline. So it's funny because the LG Gram is known for being lightweight, like a gram, it's always been that light profile kind of laptop, but now they have a even slimmer version. The Gram line along with that new Ultra Slim Pro line is rocking the latest 12th gen iCore i7s. And they do have now a dedicated graphics card, so rocking the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2050. So it makes it even better for uh, things like uh, video editing, for rocking uh, the latest game. So definitely a dope addition. And the fact that the price hasn't gone up um, as much expected for having a dedicated graphics card. And they also have the LG Style. And the finish on this one was really interesting. It almost uh, changes and shines depending on the light that is hitting it. So almost like a pearlescent kind of finish if uh, you're into cars, you're familiar with that kind of style or finish. So definitely one of the best stylish looking laptops. It also has a new integrated touchpad, which I like. I hope that is kind of carried on over to the rest of the Gram lineup. Unfortunately, uh, no RTX card or no dedicated GPU in this one. So it really is depending on what Gram life or what Gram suits your needs. I know that they still have the two-in-one option. You can still grab the one with the extra view that has that extra little screen. So essentially the Gram lineup is kind of expanding. So really dope to see. I think uh, LG smashed it out of the park this year with their booth, a ton of world's first. And um, yeah, kind of moving on to the next thing that I checked out was for example, the Mercedes Vision EQXX, which was their prototype EV, more so than an actual prototype. It's actually certified to uh, drive on the streets. We actually took it for a first drive around uh, the Strip in Vegas. It did a drive from Stuttgart to the south of France on its maiden voyage, and it essentially has the range of a thousand plus kilometers, around 750 miles. It's kind of next level, the range tech and that battery tech that's going into this EV, and the drag coefficient uh, for you geeks out there, it's essentially how good the uh, vehicle is at uh, reducing drag. It's 0.17, which is less than a football, an, an American football. So the thing cuts through air. It's got this funky design, but I know for most prototypes, EVs uh, tend to have say wheel coverings to reduce drag. This still has an iconic Mercedes look. So it looks badass. It definitely caught every single eye when we were driving it on the strip. Everyone was taking photos of us. Uh, it was cool to be one of the first people that got to do it. The materials are of course really lightweight. 
It's got magnesium wheels, a solar power roof, a tail that extends to help with that drag. And on the inside, everything is built out of uh, renewable materials. So you've got stuff like uh, vegan leather, uh, bamboo carpets, for example. So uh, keeping on that eco-friendly game, but still maintaining a very Mercedes-like design and style. So they're taking all those learnings from that battery tech, which is actually a smaller battery than their current uh, EQ, say S line, and they'll be implementing that into their next generation of EV. So there'll no longer be any uh, EV range anxiety. I know that's the biggest thing and uh, great to see cars that will be coming out in the future with uh, 500 plus miles of range as the norm. So really dope for Mercedes. I know that we were supposed to have some track time, but funnily enough, the battery got stuck uh, in Canada where I'm from uh, in customs. So we kind of missed one day. I know that it shipped uh, the next day. They had to work overnight to get everything working. We missed the track, still got to drive it on the strip, which was a ton of fun. And uh, hopefully we get to take it on another joyride soon. Speaking of cars, this was more so of a prototype traditionally where it didn't actually drive. So this was the Sony Afila, kind of built in collaboration with a Honda. This should be coming to market in 2026. It didn't look as sleek, it didn't look as sporty, but uh, cool to see a brand like Sony, which is uh, you know known for making cameras and uh, TVs and PlayStations getting into the automotive space. One of the most interesting thing was uh, the headlights or I guess the wraparound taillight LED bar was playing a Spider-Man themed ads. So that's a very Sony thing as they own the rights to a Spider-Man. The next big company that I thought their booth was uh, a bit on the tamer end, this was uh, Samsung. They unfortunately didn't have uh, any TVs on display. It was more so around connectivity and uh, making everything work together through smart things. I did see that they had an updated uh, Samsung bespoke line. So some of their cool uh, fridges, for example, you can now print out your own panels to have a true bespoke fridge. Um, you can, for example, print out a poke Pokemon fridge or a Mickey Mouse fridge uh, cover if that's what you want. Some new washing machines and the one that caught my eye because I'm kind of into kicks was a shoe styler that you can actually stick your uh, shoes into and kind of clean them and give them an aeration. That would have been perfect after a heavy day at CES walking over 15,000 steps, putting my smelly shoes into that styler to kind of air them out. And for the rest of the stuff at CES, uh, there wasn't anything really too too extraordinary or that caught my eye. Um, I guess the rest were just uh, almost little gimmicks. So the body friend uh, transformer chair, I called it, it looks like a transformer as a massage chair. So it kind of rotates down, gives you a nice massage. It would be dope to get one here in the studio or later on in the future house. Another piece of home tech, uh, Roborock came out with their new S8, S8 Plus, so their pro model, uh, new robot vacuum. So I'm sure I'll be getting that into the studio this year to help uh, kind of keep this place clean. There was a cool electric pinball machine. So I know that most pinball machines are mechanical. When those things break down, they're just so expensive to fix because they're bespoke. So this uh, company, I didn't even get the name, had a pinball with a giant LCD screen. So it reminded me of uh, Cadet Pinball for any of you uh, OG uh, Windows fans out there. And my orange roundup, I hunted down a couple pieces. The first one was from Razor. It was their Lamborghini edition uh, chair. So orange stitching, hopefully a uh, Razor will send one out. I saw a pair of orange headphones that caught my eye. And honestly, my favorite part of CES, uh, like typical, the Nikon booth had this robotic arm and I'll end off the video with a little showcase that clip that I recorded on a motorcycle. Obviously it wasn't moving. It was all robotics based. And um, that was pretty much my CES 2023 best in show, the best tech coming uh, for the rest of the year. If you had any favorites and I missed them, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be sure to pick up uh, a lot of the tech as we get into 2023. And I hope you guys um, enjoyed my coverage. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.